Now, as China's position as a leader in the Asia-Pacific continues to strengthen, the US has moved to readjust its standing in the region. But despite its super superpower status, some analysts are now questioning whether America will be able to maintain its foothold in the region due to political and fiscal challenges back at home. Professor Bates Gill is the CEO of the US Study Centre at the University of Sydney. He delivered a speech on the issue last night and he joins us now in the studio. Many thanks for, for joining thanks us. Thanks a lot. Good morning. This is a big critical issue for the US as I guess it's... Uh, it, it, it's, it's struggled quite a lot in recent times uh, recovering from the GFC as China's strength and power has just risen. Yeah, well, you know, I, I can understand, you know, much of the conventional wisdom seems to point to this inexorable rise of China and that uh, America's days are, are numbered. And I think, you know, that's just faulty reasoning. It, it rests too much on what's right in front of our faces and doesn't look carefully at what have been the obvious trends for 200 years of America's role and presence in this region. And then what's predictable going forward that I think points to a more positive picture for U.S. Uh, presence and, and role here. China has, in the re recent past, got new leadership uh, as well. Is, is that an opportunity for the Obama administration to not so much reset relations but to, uh, to, to strengthen ties? I think so, very much. I mean, um, the, the leader that's in place now, Xi Jinping, he's going to be there for another 10 years. Yep. Uh, we know that President Obama is going to be with us probably for another three or four uh, so it is an opportunity for those two leaders to get to know one another. And, you know, the recent Sunnylands uh, Shirt Sleeve Summit in California, I think, Went was a great well. opportunity for this. The, the leaders on both sides clearly understand uh, that there are challenges in the relationship, but to get it wrong would be disastrous for both sides. So I think we're going to see a real effort to, to try and straighten things out. And to, uh, back to your point, though, on the suggestion that, in fact, the U.S. can't afford to position itself in the region much longer looking for other partners. And uh, mm. Do you think that's a nonsense, that it's not going to be withdrawing any time soon? Uh, certainly not. I mean, I mean, it is clearly in the U.S. national interest uh, to remain very much engaged and to even uh, bring greater focus, resources and attention to the American role here and find new partnerships. It just makes complete sense to do it. This is where the center of gravity is in the world today, economically, politically, and otherwise. Um, and uh, there are certain real strengths that America brings to this. Um, you know, not least uh, uh, its long-term historical commitment here, its presence here, not just militarily, but uh, diplomatically, uh, you know, having possession, the territorial possessions out in this part of the world, and very strong treaty alliance relationships uh, such as those with Australia. Now, the Australian-American relationship, of course, is very, very strong, stretching back decades. Kevin Rudd has been a long-time friend of America. His return to the top office would have been warmly welcomed by the President? I would expect. I mean, uh, uh, Prime Minister Rudd is a well-known person in Washington circles and even beyond uh, in, other, in other parts of the United States. So I wouldn't see, uh, you know, any particular, the relationship is so strong, quite frankly, that uh, almost any uh, prime minister in, in Australia is going to continue a rather seamless transition. And Jeffrey Bleich has been a, a really good part of strengthening, cementing that relationship as U.S. ambassador. He's about to finish. John Berry is yes. the new guy who's been nominated by President Obama. Yeah. What do we know about him? Uh, well, John Barry, you know, has led very, very senior posts in the U.S. government. Uh, he's right now the head of the Office of Personal Management, which uh, make, makes him quite close, you know, within the office, uh, within the White House, close to the president. Um, I think we're going to have another good example of an individual who has a good relationship with the American president. And I know that he's very, very eager to, to get started out here once he's confirmed. Good to talk to you. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank we you. We appreciate your time. Thanks a lot. Thanks, mate.